went for a little ride today. I hadn't filled in with gas at the co-op gas bar in Winkler for I don't know when the last time. I'm sure it isn't that long, but boy, it was good to go into the gas station and buy that cheaper gas, see? Eh? What do you think? It's like the lady friend told me. They went for a four-hour ride so that person could <laughs> finally use up the expensive gas. This is, of course, a while back and fill up in the cheap gas. Well, yeah, uh, you have got really nowhere to go unless you want to go for a little ride. I needed to go and take a look at the field, my work. This is working, essential work, reporting on what's happening in agriculture. Well, you know, I, uh, I continue to follow the uh, Twitter and there's so much uh, discussion that it's time that uh, I needed to take a break from that and, and just go look at some things for myself. I don't think we're going to be seeing any activity here. I understand there's stuff going on in Alberta, maybe parts of Saskatchewan, but you know we had so much moisture here last fall, uh, and then with the snow cover and so forth, that uh, it's going to maybe take a little while uh, before we can really get on the, the fields. You know, and when you talk to farmers, and I'm going to be doing that on a regular basis when I get involved with uh, friends of mine, Randy and Chris Bulgamuth, Sunrise Agriculture, and we'll know more about that after Tuesday, exactly how we're going to uh, set it up and announce it, and to make sure we're going to be the new kid on the block, yeah, uh, 49 years of agricultural experience, but this particular program that I will be doing with Sunrise Agriculture and Seaman Says is going to be brand new. I'm looking forward to it. You know, when I look back at a career of, uh, of farm journalism, and you know, it can be uh, way back when uh, I started in 1971. I'm just going to keep my eyes out here and when I'm driving and make sure that I do everything right because uh, who knows, uh, the uh, RCMP and, and the local police don't necessarily have all that much to do, thank God. And so they may just want to visit with somebody that's uh, doing some stuff <laughs> that, uh, well, anyway, you know, uh, farmers, and I hate to say this, but the farmers are are a, a real hearty bunch you know they're the ones that produce the food for us and, and what a what a blessing we have in Canada but we're we're starting to see some of the major national international news outlets reporting on how the whole supply chain is breaking down and what does that mean it simply means that we have been so accustomed we have been so used to and and taken for granted that every year farmers go out there and do their thing. They plant the crop and, and look after it and so forth. And then, of course, we have uh, also the, uh, you know, the whole livestock sector. And that's probably the one that's hurting the most immediately. Why do I say that? I don't uh, at all belittle the grain farmers. Yeah, a little bit of washboardy gravel road that I decided to take and see what's going on. But at the same time, uh, the grain guys are hurting for price. And so they got to put in that $200, $300 an acre of, of crop uh, expenses and all that kind of stuff in order to hopefully have a crop in the fall and then be able to sell it, not at a loss, but at a profit because nobody can work for a loss for that long. But the livestock guys, they're backed up. They're backed up physically. Why? Because we have uh, most of the beef the processing plant capacity in Canada is basically shut down because of the virus. And so that means that we've got hoof, meat, beef on the hoof backing up. And, and you know what? The cattle guy, he can put it on pasture. And even though it may cost a little more feed, but uh, you know what? You want to make sure uh, because there are some places where 
where the pastures really aren't all that good and there wasn't all that much feed last year. So it's a challenge. And that's where the supply chain breaks down. Uh, you know, the producer is, going to, is producing. The, the beef is on the hoof. But the processing plant, where that cow, that bull, that steer, whatever it may be, an animal, needs to go and be slaughtered. That's where the supply chain looks like it's going to, or is breaking down right now. And in the hog business, the same thing. You know, we've got uh, hog producers, uh, you know, I, it, it, putting it into the, uh, as I heard one, uh, or read one tweet, you know, he's putting his, his marketable hogs into a stall that uh, gives some more room because as I said, you start adding uh, the 50, 75, and 100 pounds to an already 300 pound animal, before you know it, you've got uh, three pigs, uh, the equivalent of three pigs as far as space is concerned, and it's only two hogs. And then this fellow also said, you know, his weanlings, they would be euthanized. What a sad, sad, day and really we haven't heard from the federal government as to what kind of support and I'm not here begging for support but they've been given billions and billions and billions of dollars elsewhere in other countries and our farmers the mainstay of our production uh, so far we haven't seen anything and yeah I know Justin is going to have a another announcement or whatever talk tomorrow but who's, nobody's holding their breath and I'm hoping I'm wrong but uh, right now our agricultural industry is hurting and I know every business is hurting every sector except maybe the construction people uh, is hurting and even some sectors of the construction industry I'm sure are hurting so uh, so we've got everybody hurting, but it's the guys on the field that are producing the food and in the barns and wherever it may be, they're the ones where that food supply chain is broken because there's one cog in that wheel is not turning and that's the processing industry. So I just wanted to say uh, a few things about that. Uh, I mean, I'm driving here and I'm hoping you're, you know, the, the volume and the audio is going to be good enough. But at the same time, let me just share, it's a beautiful Sunday afternoon. The good Lord continues to bless. The good Lord continues to know exactly what's going on. The good Lord, as uh, you know, the song says, he's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Okay, uh, you didn't expect that from me at this time, maybe. But uh, I'll uh, be talking to you again soon. I'm going to be taking a little drive and so uh, we'll uh, be back uh, later on. So, you know what? That's Siemens says. Somewhere, sometime, someplace, somehow, I'm going to see you again.